think about how you prove somebody is listening to you. I mean, have you ever had a conversation where someone will be looking at you straight in the eye? It looks like they're so actively listening. And then you'll kind of ask them for their takeaways. And it was like the conversation never existed. <laughs> and and I, I paint that picture for this reason. John's question was, are multiple side communication channels a distraction to people? And in my experience, when I do training, whether it be in person or virtual, one of the first things I'll say in the training is, if any of you feel like you need to check your phone or do anything, feel free. You're not going to be judged by me. And the reason why I do that is because now more than ever, people are overwhelmed with anxiety and fear. If you're in a virtual meeting, and you're distracted because you're checking your phone or doing something else, is it disrespectful? Maybe that's a value judgment, right? But at the end of the day, what it comes down to is be less concerned at what people are doing to, to bring themselves a comfort level around anxiety and stress and be more concerned about what they're actually listening and taking away from the exchange. Because I'll put two people in front of you, one that's checking their phone five times in an hour and the other that isn't. And it's a very good chance that that person checking their phone five times an hour might have gotten more out of that meeting or might be more engaged. And that's a generational thing too. I think a lot of times, you know, you see a lot of millennials walking with headphones and it looks like they're disconnected and not listening. So we just can't make sweeping value judgments and put labels based on how people de-stress, control their anxiety, cope, and if you need that distraction, as long as you're committed and engaged to focus on the matter at hand, I'm okay giving it to you.